how to install the containerized Ansible automation platform in our system. So first of all, what is a containerized automation platform? Uh, it's a new way of installing our Ansible automation platform in our system, taking advantage from container. Using Podman as uh, underlying technology, we are able to run our automation controller, automation hub, and even driven automation inside the same system and be able to use in this simple way. As you can see, this blog post deep down of a way how we need to write down our inventory file and the way that we actually invoke the installer. But now let's get back to practice. First of all, let's download our package and get our hands dirty. By the end of this video, you will be able to uh, successfully install the containerized Ansible automation platform in your system. The first and most important things is actually have a Red Hat customer portal account uh, available. So we just need to log in in the usual way, then select the download and from a product line select a Red Hat Ansible automation platform. As you can see, I already have four options, but let me dip down a little bit that uh, I'm using selecting the latest version for RHEL 9 and that is the latest, uh, yes, and it's already pre-selected the Intel platform, that is the default, but let me switch to the ARM64. Okay, now as you can see, uh, like the normal installer, we can choose like the online installer or the bundle one. I rather prefer the bundle because it already included all the necessary package and I don't need to uh, download extra packages on my target system. Now we just need to wait until the file is successfully downloaded in my system to move to the next step. Welcome to the terminal of my freshly installed Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.2. As you can see, I already copied the file from my desktop machine to this uh, new system and uh, it matches the expectation. So now I just need to decompress the archive. It's gonna take uh, some time. So the actual time depends by the performance of your system. It's a standard tarball, so please expect to decompress using tar ZXVF option. So we're just looking around the packages and as you can see, there are many uh, already embedded images for my system. Okay, let me do a little cleanup, uh, removing the file that I'm not gonna use anymore. And uh, okay, uh, I can cut the slash etc Red Hat release to demonstrate that this is a fully working Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.2. Okay, cool. One of the things that I really would like to do is just uh, renaming this directory in AAP because uh, this name is too long. Uh, I will show you later on why I did this one. Okay, so this is the inventory file. As you can see, we need a lot of time the host name because this will be like a full name that we are going to install the system. In my case is aap.example.com. Example.com is my domain, but yeah, of course, it's an example. So let me substitute FQDN of URL host with AAP example com in all this file. So basically I would like to install the automation controller, the automation hub, the automation even driven application and be very be careful uh, if you want to install the database, specify the database as well. Okay, so you need to uncomment that line. Also, you need to specify the username of your system and uh, I'm gonna use uh, for all this password, the Red Hat password, but feel free to use a very robust one. Okay, again, we need to specify again and again our uh, host and password in all the file. Well, 
It seems obvious, but we can use a different uh, password for different system. And this password will be the password of the admin user when we are going to connect to the web UI. So be careful and be mindful to use an appropriate one. By the end of this uh, inventory file, we already set up, uh, created the blueprint for our containerized Ansible automation platform. So we just need to fill it out and uh, substitute uh, all the currency of uh, your that uh, of a full, fully qualified domain name when it's needed. We can also specify some additional uh, um, post install action, for example, applying a license file or apply some configurations of code. Okay. Now, we already have the inventory file, but I don't see any setup uh, uh, bash to execute. Okay, the way how it works is taking advantage of the Ansible collection. So we just need to define uh, an environmental variable, Ansible underscore collection, where to find uh, where the installer is actually looking for a file. So let me... Um, create this uh, environmental variable and verify that uh, was successfully applied to our bash. Okay, now the way how we run the installer is actually using the Ansible playbook uh, uh, command, specify the inventory file and ansible.containerized underscore install dot, uh, inst dot install um, um, collection. Okay. Uh, you're gonna receive this error if you try to run this command as a root user. So what I'm gonna do is uh, change the permission of the directory that I just extracted, um, expanded to the uh, Luca at users, and let me exit my root user. I can verify using who am I that I'm actually using the Luca that is a standard user and not the root user. Okay, so again, I need to set up my uh, collection path and this time I also need to rerun my wonderful Ansible playbook command. As you can see, the variable was successfully set up. Now I just need to copy and paste my Ansible playbook command. But I don't remember, so I need to do copy and paste. Yes. Okay. Uh, the execution can show you some error, for example, when you're not specified the registry username and password. So be very careful to fill it up all this section. I actually had a lot of pitfalls, so I probably have all the possible uh, problem during this uh, installer. As you can see, uh, the pseudo password is required. Uh, this is why this was because the system that I was running required a password to switch from normal user to the root user. What I did was just customizing my ATC suders to not request any password from switching from normal user to another. Okay, this is an easy fix. I just need to comment this line that requires a password and specify the no password. Uh, in a real system, there is an option of a containerized, uh, containerized uh, installer that can we can specify the password uh, for switching between normal user and root user. So these are the two options basically that we have available. I think that is uh, .k. Uh, if you encounter this type of error, it means that some components are actually needed from a repository. So we need to be careful that our system is able to actually connect to the internet. And this is also registered in the Red Hat um, network. Okay, once again, I'm going to run this installer, and this time, I hopefully, will be successful. As you can see, it is going to do a lot of pre-check and is showing a lot of messages on the screen. One of the other messages that you might encounter is this one that uh, specifies a fail to pull image from registry. The root cause might be that you forgot to specify your Red Hat network username and password. So let me jump directly to this line and on the registry username, let me specify my, that uh, 
network username as well as also the password. I'm not showing this video because this is very sensitive information, but uh, uh, let's suppose that we already modified the inventory file and we are good to go to the next step. Okay, now we are ready to launch once again the installer. Uh, hopefully you not encounter any of this problem during your installation, but what I was trying to show you is a real life uh, test and uh, fix uh, use case. Because you might enter in one of these errors and you would like to be able to find the easy solution and uh, move on. Uh, the installer is actually taking a while, depends by the performance of your system. In my case, uh, is uh, actually taking longer than the time that you saw this video because I uh, was installing all the necessary images and setting up on my system. My machine was relatively powerful, so be prepared to have a very nice uh, coffee while you wait for this installation to be done. The performance, uh, like usual, are affected by the perf uh, performance of your machine as well as of your network. I noticed that uh, one of the biggest uh, milestone moments is when it actually installed the PostgreSQL. This step requires some time as uh, also the need some configuration in, a, in the others container. So be prepared to wait for some time, but by the end of this uh, automate, automatic installation, you're gonna have your containerized Ansible application automation platform only in one machine. And you will be so delighted when you see a successful message on the screen. Oh yes, this Postgres error might be related if you forgot to enable the database area inside your uh, inventory file. So you need to specify to the installer that you want actually to install a PostgreSQL. And once again, you run again your installer and by the end of this execution, everything will be sorted out. So I sped up a little bit the video as uh, basically the installer is doing all the heavy working behind the scene and we are not actually doing anything. So we just need to sit down, relax and wait for the successful execution. As you can see, there are many, many steps that uh, the installer is doing. It's more than 300 steps under, our, under the hood that actually is not only pulling the image, it's also configuring the image to interact together. And it's very, very a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Once again, I was speeding up a video as actually there is not a, a lot of things where we can do to speed up this process as it requires to just wait that our system is connecting each other with containers and do all the settings on behalf of us. I think that Red Hat did a great work behind the scene because they create all this infrastructure to actually execute our um, installation behind the scene. So kudos to the people that are, are behind the ansible.containerized underscore installer uh, because uh, you might not see, but there are a lot of configuration, especially on the automation controller, automation hub, and the event-driven automation. So by the end of execution, you're gonna have one Ansible recap that summarizes all the steps that were actually executed on your system. And you can see that there are many, many steps underneath. So as you can see, we have 247 steps and 99 changes on our system, but we got a successful result. Yay, I'm so excited. Now this means that the Ansible automation platform containerized is successfully installed in our system. So we're able to actually connect to all the necessary services. How we can uh, verify that the system is actually running? Well, we can use the podman to, uh, uh, to list the container that are actually running on our system. How can we do it? Well, easy. We just use the podman ps and you can see all the container that is actually running 
are actually running on my system. As you can see, they are run for some several minutes and everything seems ready to go. You can spot it up if you have little experience all the necessary components of our Ansible automation platform. But most of the people, with, they just bump in the web version. How can we connect to, the, to our system? Well, simply use our hostname, so in my case aap.example.com, and bump it on the SSL port, port 443, uh, we got access to our automation controller. So let me use the admin username and the password that we define in the inventory file to actually connect to the system. As you can see, the first step is the license as I wasn't providing in the mm, uh, in, uh, inventory file. Now, if we uh, connect to the same uh, host by using port 444, we are able to access the automation hub, that is the place where uh, the role, the collection and the execution environment are stored. As you can see, this is the main uh, UI and there is no collection actually available, but this is our automation hub. Uh, we can also access the event to event automation using uh, in the same manner. We just need to switch to port 445 and here we go, using admin and the password of our inventory file, we got access to the UI. Yay! So, we have uh, successfully installed the containerized Ansible automation platform in our system. Now, the sky is the limit. Let's automate more.